All right, Linux ISOs, Plex, and Pirate Flags. What a title, right? It really gets to the heart of how much the world of home servers has changed. You know, it wasn't that long ago that a home server was just some boring beige box humming away in a basement, something only an IT pro would ever touch. But now, oh, it's a total playground for creative power users. And for a huge chunk of them, the whole thing revolves around one system, Unraid. So that's the big question, isn't it? What are people really doing with these things? I mean, what are they filling up these absolutely massive hard drives with? Well, here's a little hint for you. It is not just spreadsheets and backups of your tax returns. Oh, no. The reality is, well, it's a whole lot more fun than that. Okay, so let's talk about the gateway drug. For a ton of people in the Unraid community, the whole journey starts in the exact same spot. It all begins with a really simple idea. Hey, I just want to organize my movies and TV shows. And that, that's where the media monster is born. I mean, one user just put it perfectly. Their reason for starting? Plex, period. It is without a doubt the number one way people get sucked into this hobby. You start off thinking, you know, I'd love to have my own personal Netflix. And then, well, let's just say things tend to escalate. Fast. And you want to see how fast? Look at this. It's never just Plex. Before you know it, you've got this whole suite of apps. They're affectionately known as the R's. You got Sonar for TV shows, Radar for movies, and they all work together like a well-oiled machine to automatically find and organize everything for you. And of course, there's the awesome open source choice, Jellyfin, and Plexamp for those of us with gigantic music collections. And when I say gigantic, I am not kidding. It is totally normal to see people in this community throwing around storage numbers like this. 261 terabytes. I mean, that is just a colossal, almost unimaginable amount of data. Which, you know, brings us right to the big blinking question. What in the world could you possibly be storing that would take up that much space? So if you ask them directly, you're going to get the uh, official story. They'll say, oh, it's for, you know, critical file backups, some huge 4K video projects I'm working on, and of course, every single family photo and video we've ever taken. Sounds totally sensible, right? Very responsible. But then you get the real answer, usually with a little wink and a nod. All that storage, it's for their absolutely massive collection of Linux ISOs. This is the community's amazing inside joke for their gigantic and let's call them creatively acquired media libraries. I mean, come on, who doesn't need 70 terabytes of Linux installers, right? And they absolutely lean into it. They love the joke. Like this other user said, yar matey, we be sailing the high seas. It just perfectly captures that cheeky, fun-loving pirate spirit of the whole scene. It's great. But here's the thing, this whole media obsession, it's really just the beginning. For so many users, the journey starts with entertainment, but it evolves into something much deeper. It becomes about a kind of digital empowerment. It's about actually owning your digital life. And this right here, this is the self-hosting starter pack. This is the toolkit for that independence. People are spinning up their own personal cloud with Nextcloud so they can tell Dropbox goodbye. They're ditching Google Photos for Image because they want to keep their memories private. They're managing their own passwords with Bitwarden, blocking every single ad on their network with Pihole, and get this, they're even running their entire smart home with Home Assistant, completely free from any big tech company's control. And honestly, a quote like this just hits right at the heart of why. I don't want Google to have photos of my child. That's it. It's about privacy. It's about being in control. It's about saying, no, I'm not going to hand over my family's most precious memories to some giant corporation. It's this perfect mix of like practical paranoia and real personal empowerment. So once you've built that foundation, once you've tasted that digital freedom, that's when the real fun begins. That's when you get to go even deeper down the rabbit hole with the true power user toolkit. And a massive piece of that puzzle is remote access, right? What's the point of your own personal cloud if you can't get to it when you're not at home? This leads to one of the big debates in the community, WireGuard versus TailScale. WireGuard is awesome. It's built right into Unraid, super direct, but it can be a little finicky with certain web interfaces. Then you have TailScale, which is just ridiculously easy. You install it, you log in, and you're done. As one user said, it just works, and it makes getting to all your stuff remotely a total breeze. Now, for all the pirate jokes and the Linux ISOs, don't get it twisted. This community is dead serious about protecting their data, 
especially the irreplaceable stuff, like family photos. The 3 2 1 backup rule isn't just a suggestion, it's basically gospel. You've got three copies of your data on two different kinds of media with at least one of those copies stored completely off-site. They don't mess around. And then you get to the really wild stuff. Beyond all the practical applications, this is where the experimentation happens. People are running game servers for their friends, Minecraft, Day of Defeat, you name it. They're self-hosting their own Git repositories to work on code. I even saw one person who spun up a private Wordle clone just to impress their spouse. And some people are building full-on gaming PCs as virtual machines with GPUs passed right through to them. The possibilities are, like, literally endless. So you see, it really does become more than just a piece of tech coming in a closet. For these folks, their server becomes a lifestyle. And honestly, sometimes it kind of gets treated like a pet. And I just love this quote. It's so perfect. My old drives live out their days in a Norco case. It's like they're in a nice, comfy retirement home. There's this genuine affection for the hardware itself that's just really special. And you don't see it everywhere. And then there's this amazing sense of mock professionalism. You'll hear users talk about their home server being in production, like they're running a mission-critical data center for some mega corporation. But it's really just sitting there in their spare bedroom. It's so geeky and endearing and just a little bit ridiculous all at the same time. So when you boil it all down, it all comes back to one core idea. Whether you're serving up terabytes of Linux ISOs, protecting those precious family photos, or building the ultimate automated smart home, this has become so much more than just an operating system. It's a platform for people who want to take back control of their own digital domain. Which kind of leaves us with one last question, aimed right at you. The tools are all out there. The community is bigger and more helpful than ever. So if you've got an old computer sitting around, maybe a couple of hard drives collecting dust, you've got everything you need to start. The only real question left is, what are you going to build?